Welcome to worship. It's so good to see all of you this morning. I kept asking the, the my, I have Alexa. I kept saying, Alexa, what's the weather tomorrow? What's the weather tomorrow? What's the, this morning? What's the weather? Only 14% chance of rain. I'm like, woohoo! <laughs> Last night it woke me up, though. <clears throat> so, um, I want to remind you that the announcements come to you every Friday and every Sunday, so make sure you read through those. I have an announcement that was given to me from um, Jane, and she said, um, UMW, just a reminder that UMW is meeting Tuesday, May 3rd at 1 p.m., and that will be here. Okay, so here in the fellowship hall, I'm guessing, yeah. All right, so let us begin worship by reciting our Dixborough vision. Dixboro Church is an inclusive faith community living and serving through God's love. And now Brian is going to run over real fast and ring our church bell for us. We're going to invite you to stand as you're able and join our joyful noise in singing Here I Am to Worship.
Good morning. Thank you for your faithful giving. Please continue to send or bring in your tithes and offerings to the church. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The author of Hebrews speaks of giving as a discipline. Notice he could have equated doing good with anything. Do not neglect to do good and to pray. Do not neglect to do good and to study the Bible. Do not neglect to do good and to volunteer at church. But he says something else, something at the heart of doing good. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Will you join me in making a sacrifice pleasing to God by sharing what you have with the kingdom today? Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Let us join together as we sing the doxology. Thank you, O oh God, for the offerings that have been received and continue to come in, and we give you thanks, and we pray that you would bless them for the use of your service and your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Joy in this 
So this morning we are, um, maybe you noticed the message sign out there on, on the green as you came in to worship today. If you didn't, make sure you check it out. Do we have a picture? Okay. So the sign must not have shown up on here because I did have the sign. Um, <laughs> but the reason Becky's picture is up there is because Becky Horvath uh, donated the sign. Becky, why don't you wave your hand just so everybody knows who you are. So do make sure that you look at the sign. It's a beautiful sign. It's going to be a message center that is going to tell what things are happening in our community, what things are happening within um, the uh, that's happening on the Village Green, and then also uh, we're able to put some events on there as well, like the Cookie Walk and different things. So um, it's we're very grateful for that, Becky. So thank you so much. So today we consecrate this message sign donated by Becky Horvath in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please join me in prayer? Most loving God, without you, no words or works of ours have meaning. Accept this gift as a symbol of loving donation, devotion, sorry, as we have consecrated this gift for your glory. Grant us your blessing that it may be an enduring witness before all your people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, Becky, for, for giving that, that sign that was very much needed. Yes. So um, we come to our time of prayer, and um, you may have noticed that Reverend Mary's family is not here once again. And it's not because Reverend Mary's preaching somewhere else. It's that their family all has COVID except Layla. Oh, she got it now. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> so keep them in your prayers as they continue to recuperate and recover from, from COVID. The good thing is that they have all had their, their shots, and, and we're thankful for that. Um, so uh, we also want to remember those who continue to be on our prayer list as we lift them um, before you this morning. And uh, we continue to remember the COVID situation. It seems my mom got a note yesterday that someone from her congregation has gotten COVID. And it seemed like before it was all outside of our congregations. And now it's hitting people at home where we live and where we worship. So um, we want to remember all of those. We want to continue to remember Art and uh, Cliff Sheldon, Bobby, um, and Carol Weigel all have health concerns. We want to remember all of them. Also, obviously, if you turn on your TV, you're aware of what's happening in Ukraine. And so we want to lift up all of them, continue to remember them, and um, certainly our hearts go out to them and our prayers as well. We want to remember all of those who continue to uh, be in our homebound members, whether they're in care centers or at home or living elsewhere but aren't able to be with us. We, we lift them up this morning as well. I'm sure that you might have prayers that you bring with you but have not been mentioned. So um, we want to lift those to the Lord as well. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our holy God, we come this morning... We give you thanks for everything that you do and things that we're not aware of. We thank you for loving us and giving to us your word by which we can have examples of, of ways to, to live our Christian faith. We pray that you would be with all of those that we have mentioned today and those that we have not we lift them before you, and we pray that you would do whatever it is that you know needs done. And so, God, we, we <clears throat> lift them today, and we give you thanks. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who by your mercy and grace you gave him without cost to us, but that you gave him freely, that we might be saved that we might have new life. And so we pray, God, the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Have you ever seen this before? It's a movie. Now this movie is about some fish. Nemo is the name of the title of, of the movie, and Nemo is one of the characters in this movie. And his father, Marlon, and a friend, Dory. They're all in this movie. It's a good, it's a good movie, a fun one to watch. In, the, in this movie, the fish talk to each other. Can fish talk? Can fish talk? No, I don't think so. So do you think this story is a true story? Probably not. It's probably not true. But it's a fun one to watch. Another book that I have here You may not know this person, but some of the people out here in the congregation, they would know who this is. 
Her name is Malala, and the name of the book is I Am Malala. Her picture is right here. The main person in the story of Malala is Malala and her family, and they live in a, another country far, far away. And Malala decided she wanted to go to school, but in her country, they wouldn't allow her to go to school. So she had to fight very, very hard in order to be able to go to school. She wrote the story herself. She had help from the grown-ups, but she wrote it herself. Why do you suppose she would want us to know about herself? Why would she want to know about Malala? Do you have an, any idea? No idea. Hmm. No idea. Any of you have an idea? To inspire us. She wasn't allowed to go to school at all because the people in her country said, no, would you like that? No, I love school. And so I'd want to go to school too. She wanted to let the world know about her problem in her country. Huh, here's the next book, the last book I have for you. What is this? Do you know what this is, James? It's a book, and it has words on the spine, and it says Bible. Now, this is a Bible that we have for the youth, but we have Bibles in uh, each one of our pews. And could you hold up one of the Bibles if you can find one? Anybody find a Bible here real close? Oops. Oh, there's one. Oh, I, and I'm looking out in the congregation. I see a whole bunch of Bibles that people are holding up. My goodness, who is the Bible talking about? Who are the main characters in the Bible? Who do you think? Us. Oh, what, what was that? All of us? Even Jesus. That's right, James. Jesus is one of the main characters in the Bible. But if I were to put this microphone down, which I will right now, the only part of the Bible that talks about Jesus is this much. This other part here talks about someone else. Who else is in the Bible besides Jesus? God, that's right. The biggest part of the Bible is about God. And do you think God sat down with a pencil and a paper or a computer long ago and wrote the words to put into the Bible? Do you think they had computers when God was making our, our, our land, our world? No, you're, you're right, James. They don't, he didn't have it. So how did we get the words that are in here? How did they get in here? Writers wrote them. Writers wrote them. God talked to certain people and told them what he wanted them to say in this Bible. And in the Bible, it says sometimes God even breathe the words into the hearts of those people, and they wrote them down. Why would God want us to know about the Bible? It's a story of God's life. It, it's a story of, of our lives. Why would God want us to know about him? Any idea? No. No? Well, that was, that's a tough question. Um, any, do you, any of you have ideas out there? He loves, he loves us? Ah, and in here, the words he tells us, tells us how we should love others. So he's instructing us. He wants us to understand all about him, and he wants us to be more like him. Now, I have a song that I would like to sing, and I'd like to teach you the song, and I hope you all may know this song and will join us in uh, singing it. It goes like this. I'll sing it first, and then you join in. We'll probably do it like three, three times, okay? The B-I-B-L-E. Now that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Let's give it a try, everybody. Join us if you know the words. The B-I-B-L-E. Now that's the book for me. 
I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. One more, the B-I-B-L-E. Now that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Wonderful. Let us all pray. Dear Father, oh, thank you so much for the Bible. Thank you so much for telling the writers of the Bible the words you wanted us to know about you. Help us to read that Bible, to read the words that are in there, to help to understand what you want us to do and how you want us to behave. Thank you again, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jim is going to come up and get the microphone from Marilyn and read the scripture for us today. The scripture lesson, Psalm 119, 105, Timothy 3, 16, 17, John 14, 6. Your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. Every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. I invite you all to stand as you're able. We're going to join in singing wonderful words of life. So we continue our series on doubt this morning, and I bet you can't wonder, or I bet you don't know what the, the theme of today's service is. What do you think? What? Oh, the Bible. All right. So last week, of course, we began our series. Where we have three weeks of of this series talking about doubt. And of course, doubt can lead us to examine our, our faith more closely. And doubt is questioning, what is what I believe what I should believe? So today, of course, we look at the question, is the Bible true? Well, the biblical authors were human beings. And um, I thought Marilyn was going to preach my sermon this morning. Because you did a great job of, of getting right into it. 
Uh, so um, today we're going to look at that question, is the Bible true? And the, the biblical authors were human beings just like you and I. And, and they were human beings that, that God was influencing them and, and that they are writing about their experiences and reflections. Um, I grew up thinking that the Bible was the literal word of God, like God told them exactly what to say. But then once I really started getting into the Bible, there were discrepancies in certain stories. And I mean, we brought, I brought this out, I think, well, more than once, but I, I think I touched on it last week, how the Gospels are four different stories of, of pretty much the same events. And yet, so if it was the literal word that God told them to write, they would have been exactly the same, right? So it's okay to, to question uh, about the, the scriptures. And so I, I began to think, okay, this is more of things that they experienced and, and that they're sharing, kind of like a, a biography, not an autobiography, but a biography of, of what happened, what transpired. And we know that stories were, before they were written, were, were transferred down from generation to generation to generation, sitting around the campfires and, and sharing the stories of the experiences that they had. It's kind of like uh, we tell our family stories, and um, I can tell you things that happened in my mother's life that I, can pa I have passed on to TJ. I don't know whether he'll pass it on to Azazel, but I will. But, um, you know, those stories we continue to tell over and over again. Like, there's a funny one in our house where my grandma came to visit, and... Um, my mom, it was one of those pull strings, you know, and my mom, she goes, oh, this is neat, and this was a long time ago, and so my, mo my mom said, yeah, if you pull it 10 times, it gets brighter each time. Well, of course, she pulled it once, and then it would go off, and then she'd pull it, and then it'd go off, and, but she believed them, so um, I have this lamp that's sitting next to our couch, and if you, there's a little button on it, and if you touch that button, Three times, the third time it gets, you know, I mean, it gets brighter each time. <laughs> so my mom's in the house that she can't find a light to turn on. And it was getting dark, and I don't remember where I was, but I said, you know, I was talking to her on the phone, and I said, look, if you push that button three times, it gets brighter. <laughs> she goes, are you being serious? Because <laughs> we all know the ten times story. <laughs> So the, the, the writers wrote down their thoughts and their dreams, um, their hopes and insights of God into God. Their bibl the biblical writers are, were writing down the stories that they were moved to write down, the stories they had experienced, stories that, that have been passed down, like I said, um, talking around the campfire. Who is God? And these are the stories they were sharing and how they heard that still, small voice of God, how they felt convicted at times, how they felt challenged other times, how they were afraid. They're describing all of these things of who God is. They're writing, of course, in their own times. And I've said this before, that we have to remember when we're reading the scripture of the time, the context, the culture that the scripture was written for. That's not to say that what's in there isn't meaningful to us as well. But we have to look at it then. How does that relate to our time, our culture, our experience? And so they were interpreting it. The, the, the scripture um, says the Holy Spirit is inspiring and influencing them. Because they are people of their time, there are certain things that they can't see that what we experience now. And so certain things they won't ever see. So there are so many different um, authors of the Bible and we're going to see, they're going to see things in a slightly different ways. Maybe it's the author's humanity. I mean, if we left today and we all described today's service, none of us would experience it the same way. Right? It's kind of like that game where you play telephone and everybody, somebody whispers into the first person's ear and by the time it gets back to you, usually not anything like what you said. So, Jesus asked questions of the Hebrew Bible. Remember, the Hebrew Bible is the Old Testament that we have today. And he said, you've heard it was said of old, but I say to you. So here he's saying, 
this is what was written in the Bible, but, you know, this is what I'm telling you now. And even when we take communion later on in the service, and when we raise that cup, we say, this is the blood of the new covenant. Because we don't practice all of the things that were in the Old Testament. It's what Christ offered and practiced to us in the New Testament. So, in the text, it isn't what I want you to do today. This is what Jesus is saying. He's pushing back um, other times. He's pushing back on the interpretation of Scripture in his day and time. And he has questions. There's, there's a place where he says, Moses said this to you, but I say something different to you. So we find that, that he reinterprets the Scripture for the time in which he is living in. Scripture is very important to Jesus. I mean, we know he, he has it memorized. How many of you have Scripture memorized? I have a few verses, you know, but I don't, I don't know as much. I don't know half as much as my mother does. But I also don't, you know, I don't have it, the whole thing memorized. And so Scripture, he has it memorized. He's preaching it. He lives it. He's personifying it. He's embodying the Scripture story. And when he dies on the cross, he's quoting Scripture. He's praying Scripture. Twice we know that he quotes from the Psalms. When he's tempted by Satan, what is he doing when he's out in the wilderness? He's, he's quoting Scripture. So it's very important to him. And at the same time, He can say, well, this is a place where we're going to push back. I'm going to tell you something different than what you've read in the scripture. The Apostle Paul does the same thing. I mean, when the early church was started and the the Christians began, the the people began to become Christian, it was, they came to the Hebrew Bible, and it was all the Gentiles that were coming to faith, coming to be a Christian. And so they were going, Paul was saying, hey, you know, we have to follow all of the ceremonial laws in the Hebrew Bible? And eventually the leaders of the church, you know, they said, well, that's in the Torah. It's, it, that is in our Bible. But we don't think that it, it, it is meant for, for these people, these Gentiles that are coming. So how did they get there? Because they understood that there was permission to ask questions, to interpret it and reinterpret it. And when we ask questions, our goal is to find out the answers, right, that lead us to a deeper faith. Not to dismiss certain things out of the Bible. You know, we don't go to the Bible and go, okay, I'll take this verse, but not that one, right? But, but we look at... Um, we look at, when we're reading the scripture, if something is true or not. So I'm going to give you several ways that you can think about this when you are reading the Bible. First, we read the scripture through the lens of Jesus. What would Jesus say about this today? And we're not talking about Jesus in the time that he was, but, but how would Jesus respond, react to this today? We remember the great commandments, which was what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And then also the golden rule, which says what? Treat others like you want to be treated. So if we're looking at scripture in that frame, you know, Jesus certainly loved everybody. And so we are to love others. It doesn't mean we have to like what they're doing, but we're to love them. And, and we're to treat others how we want to be treated. So we see the themes of love and compassion and justice and mercy. And then we discuss the scriptures with, with our trusted friends. We have de- debates and, and discussions. And we, we talk to them with our colleagues or people that we can really have good conversations and not end up you know, in a massive argument. We also use reason and experience as we study the scripture, and and then we pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us when we're reading. I have with me today, I have a strainer, okay? 
And I look at this strainer and I, you know, we put our fruits and vegetables in here that we, we get. And, and if you're buying them, especially from the farmer's market, you know, they're dirtier than they are from the, from the grocery store. But the grocery store has all those pesticides and things on them. So when we, we, when we put our fruits in here and we wash them real well, um, the dirt and everything comes off of them, goes through these holes... And what is left is the good stuff, right? And so I look at Jesus as like this strainer, okay? So whatever doesn't fit with what Jesus said and did, whatever is inconsistent with, with that, it doesn't mean that we cut it out of the Bible, like I said. It just means that, that we, we strain it. We look at it through, through the lens of Jesus, We know we can have doubts and we can have questions when we find that things are not consistent. One warning that I do give, though, is don't set aside the things in the scripture that, that, that are inconvenient for you. Because most times when we find things are just inconvenient, that's usually what God is asking us to do. And we would rather just... <clears throat> Push that aside. I don't think I like that scripture. So, probably, if we do the things that are inconvenient, we find we actually get blessed. But we want to set aside when there are things in the scripture that, that bring harm to others. And, and it's not consistent with love. It, it pushes others away. We might have room to ask questions. Hey, is this really something that we should be about? Is this really who we as Christians want to be? And so when we read the Bible, this is God's story of amazing grace. And when Marilyn said, you know, we want to read this thing. We want to know the stories in here. Because I guarantee we haven't read them all. We haven't heard them all. I can read the same story 20 times and get something new out of it. So whether you've read that story, I know that story about David and Goliath. I know it front and backwards. And yet, there's still more to learn. And so it's, it's God's amazing story of grace, God's working in the world, God's transformation of human beings. And it's a love story of God for humankind, and it's, it's humanity struggling to live in that love. So the Bible, I believe, is the most important book that we can have of all time. And Jim read for us 2 Timothy verses 16 to 17. I just want to read that again. Every scripture is inspired by God. It doesn't say God wrote it down. It's inspired by God. And it is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. God has influence over all scripture. God is working through the biblical authors. And, and this book was influenced by God. So we could be taught and we could see our mistakes and we could be corrected. Hmm. How many of y'all like to be corrected? We can be equipped in our character so that everyone who belongs to God could be equipped to live their life the way that God wanted us to live. It's a love story. It's a road map. It's a guide for life. It comforts us. It consoles us. It compels us. It challenges us. It convicts us. And sometimes it moves us to question so that we have scripture, tradition, experience, and reason to discern what it is that we truly believe. But the primary way we look at the truth is to see what exactly does the scripture teach us about Jesus? What does the scripture teach us about how we are to live? God speaks if we listen. And that becomes our defining story. 
Let's pray. God, I pray that you will bless every person here this morning hearing this message. Those who have serious questions and doubts, I pray that you will help them understand Scripture maybe a differently than the way that, that we were taught. Help us to see it as this amazing, incredible story and teach us who you are and what you have for our lives. Help us open and read and study and meditate upon and live, truly live the scripture. We pray this in your precious holy name. Amen. This morning, as we come to our time of communion, we are so grateful for the grace that God gave to us through his son. For without him, I know I've said this before, we wouldn't even be here. We would be living in a world of darkness. And yet here we are today, celebrating that Christ who came and lived and died for each one of us here. When the, on the night when he met with his disciples, he took the bread, he gave thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat this bread, remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to God, and he said, this is the blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as we drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so today, that's exactly what we come to do. We come to remember the, the grace, the mercy, the love that was poured out on each of us through Jesus Christ. This morning, everyone is welcome at this table. Everyone is, is valued. Everybody is of worth. It doesn't matter if you are a member of this congregation or if you uh, grew up here. It doesn't really matter how old or young or, or whatever. All are welcome at Christ's holy table. I invite you to come as you are released. Our, um, who's doing the releasing? Okay, Carol Barnett is going to do, is going to release you by pew. And so as you come forward, we're still in COVID. So please have your masks on. When you come to partake, keep social distancing. There's marks on the floor and there is uh, hand sanitizer on the table there. As you come forward to take communion, you will be handed a piece of bread via tongs. I'm like, gosh, I can't wait till we're done doing that. It seems so impersonal. But do know it's given in love. And it is Christ's body that's broken for us. And then I invite you to pull down your mask and go ahead and eat your bread. And then receive your juice. Take from the outside in. And there are trash baskets on either side. So if you're going whichever direction, you can throw your plastic cup away as you return back to your seat. I was, <clears throat> I forgot about Reverend Mary not being here with me today. Is there someone who would volunteer to assist me with communion? All right.
Casting my cares aside I'm leaving my past behind I'm setting my heart and mind on you Jesus I'm reaching my hand to yours Believing there's so much more Knowing that all you have in store for me is good, it's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about to Trusting in what you say, today is the day. I'm putting my fears aside. I'm leaving my doubts behind. I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hand to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is a day. Today is a day. I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. and sorrow where you lead me I will follow I'm trusting in what you say today is a day today is a day today is a day today is a day forth standing on the b-i-b-l-e because that's the book for who for me for us for the entire world go forth in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen today is the day 